What's going on, friends? Sound Prince here, back once again. Today we're in the studio and we're here to look at this. It's the Wondermaker ZI. It's a 300, 300, 300, 4-car Core XY 3D printer that you might have just backed on Kickstarter. So this is the early model of this particular printer. So we're going to get it out of the box. Done. We're going to go through some of the specifications and I'm going to give you my open and honest opinion on the first impressions of the ZR. Let's get straight on into this one. You are watching a master at work. Whether you're a hobbyist, a student, or a pro engineer, PCBWay.com has you covered. From simple two-layer boards to complex multi-layer designs, they offer high-quality PCBs with fast turnaround and competitive pricing. Plus, their assembly service and 3D printing options make them the one-stop shop for makers, so visit PCBWay.com and turn your ideas into reality. Thank you once again to PCBWay for sponsoring this channel. So what is it? Well, there are two models, the ZR, which is the one we have here, and the ZR Ultra. The Ultra comes with four tool heads, while the version we have here is only a single tool head. The big difference between them is really how they handle filament purging, or as some call it, poop. And if you're a regular viewer here, you will know that I'm not a huge fan of waste. That being said, with tool changes, there is potential to save filament in the long run. But in this video, we are going to be purely focusing on the ZR without the multi-tool system and just the single tool head. So how do we get here? Well, the ZR and ZR Ultra both launched a few months ago on Kickstarter. The ZR's early bird price was $399, where the Ultra came in at $549. The campaign smashed its goals, ended up fully funded with 1,114 backers, and raised about $850,000. Two printers differ only in the build volume and the number of print heads, since the framework itself is largely the same. The ZR offers a 300mm cube print volume, where the Ultra is slightly smaller at 300 by 270 by 290 mainly due to the print head assembly taking up the extra space. Both allow four color or multi-material printing, but they achieve this slightly in different ways. As for the specs, there are solid 300 degrees on the hot end, 100 degrees on the heated bed, print speeds up to 300 millimeters squared, travel speed at 600 millimeters squared, acceleration again at 20K, and the nozzle sizes differ from 0.2 all the way up to 0.8. There's a PEI flexible bed that's included, and supported materials include PLA, PLACF, PETG, PETGCF, TPU, PET, ABS and ASA. And it's an open printer, though if you're planning to print some of the more exotic materials, then an enclosure is definitely going to be recommended. Now this particular unit has a built-in camera, it's running clipper, and the UI is surprisingly well packed with features. The slicer is Orca Slicer, and for once it's stock Orca with no rebranding, which is really nice to see. Clipper is also fairly open. You can access it from your computer, although I've not really tested it and to see actually how open it really is. Now, currently, Wondermaker does seem to be a few weeks behind on manufacturing, which has raised some concerns over delivery. That being said, I have been added to a development group over on Facebook, and there are a number of beta testers ironing out firmware, slicer, and general tuning issues. From what I can see, these are all relatively minor, and it should be a positive step moving forward for backers waiting for their machines. It should ultimately lead to a better overall experience. So as I said at the beginning of the video, I'll cover the unboxing, the specs, and the first test prints. The unboxing went smoothly, no damage, well packaged, and it arrived within the agreed timeline. I did know already up front that I'd need to upgrade the firmware on arrival, and since then we've seen another three updates released along with Orca Slicer updates. And on top of that, I've done some of my own tuning in Clipper, adjusting things like extruder rotation distance, pressure advanced, and PID. But don't worry, I don't think you'll have to do this out of the box, but this is how things used to be done on 3D printers, and tuning always seems to help since no two machines are exactly the same. So is this a review? Well, no, not really. It's more of a first look, and there's still tuning to be done. The goal here is very much to evaluate the machine objectively and flag potential usability issues. And over the years, I've seen plenty of stress points with new launches, damaged printers, different filament behavior, and even quirky issues like moisture affecting prints. Factory test prints are one thing, but once it's on your desk at home, the reality can be very different. For example, in some of my early prints, I had layer shift issues, which was resolved by adjusting the bed through a hidden menu. After that, I focused on print quality and dimensional accuracy, dialing in the pressure advance and other settings. On this US Benchy test, I was able to see strong improvements across the prints, showing that with a bit of tuning, the machine really does start to shine. 
Now, personally, I think Wondermaker are starting to get back into a stronger position. Launching two products at once on Kickstarter is always more complicated than it first seems. That being said, despite the delays, machines are now making their way into the hands of beta testers and reviewers. And here's the key point. Wondermaker asked me specifically for feedback before I put the machine through its paces, so they could really iron out any software bugs. Time really hasn't been on my side to give this printer a full test with the promised materials, but a deeper review is coming very soon. As for first impressions, the ZR is a budget-friendly machine with some interesting features, but if I'm being honest, the tool changer, the Ultra, is probably the more compelling option overall, mainly because it cuts down on the waste. From what I've seen on the dev groups, the firmware and software are very close to being finalized now and once the community starts sharing profiles and settings, the experience should only improve. If you're interested, I'd certainly recommend joining the Wondermaker Facebook group to keep up with those developments. And as for me, well, I'm heading back out to the States and then on to China, but I'll continue working with the ZR and bring you more up-to-date reviews as time allows. In the meantime, I'd love to hear what you think about the ZR and the ZR Ultra and what excites you about these machines. What concerns you have, drop your thoughts down in the comment section. So if you want to keep up with this journey, well, make sure you hit that subscribe button. The links below are there in case you want to purchase one of these. Friends, we will see you next time. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.